Peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the simplicity of salvation. I pray that today's video will be a blessing for anyone listening to those who are new in the faith, those who are seeking genuine answers for questions. I pray that you will use this channel and today's video as a way to communicate your word and your word only. Forgive us for our shortcomings, for you are far from perfect, Father. Let your will be done in Jesus' mighty name. We pray, amen. The Catholic Church has undoubtedly put his stamp of the quote-unquote Christian world throughout the history. However, the Catholic Church has also added a lot of non-biblical teachings onto Scripture, knowing that Scripture is a Bible believer's final authority. Psalm 138 verse 2, the Word of God says, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. The Word of God gives a promise that the Word of God is the final authority for every believer. Now, here's a clip from an interview between Jewish apologist Ben Shapiro asking Catholic Bishop Robert Barron about the Catholic way of salvation. Watch this. So let's start okay. with the most awkward of the awkward questions. Yeah. I don't really care about this question particularly much, but I get this question a lot, which is, you know, as a Jew, how does it feel that there are other religions that don't think you're getting into heaven? So let me ask you, what's the Catholic view on who gets into heaven and who doesn't? I feel like I lead a pretty good life, a very religiously based life in which I try to keep not just the Ten Commandments, but a solid 603 other commandments as well. And I spend an awful lot of my time promulgating what I would consider to be Judeo-Christian virtues, particularly in Western societies. So what's the Catholic view of me? Am I basically screwed here? No. The Catholic view, go back to uh, the Second Vatican Council, says it very clearly. I mean, Christ is the privileged route to salvation. I mean, God so loved the world, he gave his only son that we might find eternal life. So that's the, the privileged route. However, Vatican II clearly teaches that someone outside the explicit Christian faith can be saved. Robert Barron sounds great, very intelligent, using a bit of Bible. And that is why we always have to ask ourselves, for what saith the scripture? The word privileged route sounds great, but is absolutely non-biblical. Jesus Christ plainly stated in John 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So whatever you want to say about salvation, there is only one way. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now they're saved through the grace of Christ, indirectly received. So I mean, the grace is coming from Christ but it might be received according to your uh, conscience. So if you're following your conscience sincerely, or in your case, you're following the commandments of the law sincerely, yeah, you can be saved. Now that doesn't conduce to a complete relativism. I, we still would say the privileged route and, and the, the route that God has, has offered to humanity is, is the route of his son. But no, you can be saved. Uh, even Vatican II says that an atheist of goodwill can be saved because in following his conscience, if he does, John Henry Newman said the conscience is the aboriginal vicar of Christ in the soul. It's a very interesting characterization. That it is, in fact, the voice of Christ. If he's the Logos made flesh, right? He's the divine mind or reason made flesh. That when I follow my conscience, I'm following him, whether I know it explicitly or not. So even the atheist, Vatican II teaches, of goodwill can be saved. So is Catholicism act-based or faith-based? Because this has been sort of the traditional distinction between Judaism, for example, and Christianity, yeah. is Judaism is a very acts-based religion where it's all about what you do in this life and that earns you points in heaven. Uh, and then there's the faith-based religions that are more based on you believe in the truth, the way, and the life, and now you're in. Where, where does Catholicism actually stand, or is that division too star? No, I, I would say it's love-based. Uh, God is love. God so loved the world, he sent his only son we're being drawn into the divine love. So there are two issues here. Jesus Christ is not God's only son. If so, the word of God contradicts himself. We read in John chapter one, verse 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That means that every believer who repented, meaning was first an unbeliever and now is a believer, the Lord Jesus Christ gave him the power to become a son or daughter of God. Now, just because a saved man is a son of God doesn't make him Jesus Christ, of course. 
and that is point B, which Bishop Robert Barron left out. That God so loved the world, he gave his only son that we might find eternal life. John 3 verse 16, the word of God says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So the Lord Jesus Christ is the only begotten son speaking directly to Jesus Christ's divine nature. And the vast majority of modern Bible translations have cut out the begotten. This is one of the reasons why I urge you, brethren, especially those who are new in the faith, to get your hands on a King James Bible. And God so loved the world, he gave his only son that we might find eternal life. No, sir. The word might indicates that one is not sure of the security that is eternal life, which is a teaching that goes against the word of God. We read in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection is the price he paid on the cross to bear all the sins and it is for man to receive as a gift, as the gift of God. That is grace through faith. That is how salvation is obtained, not earned, because it is not of works, lest any man should boast. So God makes this great offer in Christ. Is it accepted in faith? Yeah, Aquinas says faith is the, is the door of the spiritual life. Without faith, you can't get into the spiritual life. That means a trust in the divine love. Now, having made that great fundamental act, are you now called upon to be fully engaged, mind, will, passion, body, everything, in response to that love, a love awakening love in you? Yes. So we use the language of cooperation with grace, and that grace comes first, accepted in faith. Luther was right to that extent. If Luther had said, gratia prima, we'd be fine. Grace first. So that's, that's true at any time you're relating to God. If you're saying, well, I'm going to do it. I'm on my way to climb the holy mountain. Well, then you're on the wrong path, just by definition. So, of course, it begins with grace. But then God, who's not competitive with us, he, he wants us fully alive. And so God invites us now to respond, body and soul, everything we've got, in love to the love that he's offered us. So I put it that way. It's grace and then cooperation with grace, which manifests itself in a life of love. And that's what, what salvation consists in. When it comes to salvation, a person has to understand that he or she is a sinner and have come short of the glory of God. Romans 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you take a look at the Ten Commandments and use that as a schoolmaster or a checklist to see whether you have stolen, whether you have lied, whether you have been an adulterer, or worse, if you have murdered someone. That is a checklist to see that you are a sinner. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 9, however, says, the thought of foolishness is sin. Based on the amounts of thoughts, at least about 12,000 thoughts per day, you are a sinner by default. And so you have to accept and understand that you are a sinner and sin has to be judged with a burning hell. Revelation 21 verse 8, the word of God says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So all these sins, and these are just a couple of examples, are all sin in the eyes of God, which makes you a sinner. And a sinner has to be judged with a burning hell fire. However, fortunately for us, God provided a way for us to be saved from the penalty of sin. We read in Romans chapter 5, verse 8 and 9, But God commanded his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. And that is where the gospel of Christ comes into play, which is the power unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek, a.k.a. non-Jews or Gentiles. Believe in what? The gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for us according to the scriptures, 
and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. The Father sent his only begotten Son to pay the penalty of sin in hell, and the way that you obtain that is to repent by believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. So unlike many preachers today who will have you believe that you have to repent from all your sins, which is a sentence that you will not find in your Bible, not even once. Repentance means a change of mind or to turn to God. Why? Because of your sinful condition, which leads you to hell as an unbeliever, you need to turn to God or have a change of mind to the Savior, Jesus Christ, who already has done all the work for you. And then you can say that to God as a way to solidify your faith in the heart, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's grace and then cooperation with grace, which manifests itself in a life of love. And that's what, what salvation consists in. And God so loved the world, he gave his only son that we might find eternal life. And so there is no might, wish, or hope. You can be absolutely certain of salvation, not because of how good you are, not because of what you have sacrificed. No, because of the sacrifice that the Lord Jesus Christ had made 2,023 plus years ago for your sins. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your perfectly preserved word in English and the simplicity of your gospel unto salvation. I pray that today's video was a video out of edification, shared out of love for your glory, no one else's. Forgive us for our shortcomings, Lord, and I pray that anyone watching this video will be blessed with the simplicity of your gospel, of what you have done on the cross, Lord Jesus Christ, your death, burial, and resurrection. May your will be done, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen.